things and you have the way you present things and and sometimes people struggle with one way or another and so yep. you may do things a little different and somebody's going to go I finally got it I so it. Sure. we're going to start with edge to edge because that is the one thing that people yep. use the most constantly constantly so I'm going to just kind of say Go for it. And, okay. first of all, before I hand it over to you, uh, Susan is actually using a mouse. We have it plugged in. She's using a mouse so that you can see her arrow where she's pointing to the buttons, and we'll talk through, you know, we'll name that button so you, you follow, and she'll, if she goes too fast, I'll say, slow down, slow down. <laughs> Try not to. So we're going to have a mouse with this, and let's do it. Okay. We ready to set our area? Let's do So what, what's your first plan here? Well, we're going to set up an edge to edge for our little quilt top here. Uh, we're going to set an area, and then we're going to repeat designs to fit into that space. So before we loaded this quilt top, what was the first thing that you did? Well, we measured it from side to side and from top to bottom. Right, maybe. because otherwise I can't get that yeah, measurement. Once it's on the frame and rolled around the bars, we can't measure it very conveniently. Okay, so you have those two measurements, right. width and height. You can find your width, but the height we need to Correct. have already measured. Need to okay. input that. So then what? Well, then we're going to drive the machine, the needle, to the upper left-hand corner of the quilt. Okay. And we're going to set an area point there. So we've already activated the area tab on the screen, but let me show you where it is. Here's the area tab. Okay, so all those buttons across the top are tabs. These are all the tabs. Now, anytime that we're working in Pro Stitch or Premium, we're going to work across the tabs first, choose a tab, and then from that selection, the next choice will be made from the ribbon, which is the area directly below So the each tabs. tab has a ribbon yep. of tools. That's correct. Okay. And so in the area tab, we have some options. We're going to go straight to the two-corner area. We're going to set our first corner in the upper left-hand corner of the quilt, just off the edge of the quilt top. Okay. And we're going to set a two-corner area point there. I'm going to refresh this so that we can see. So That's there's our first that. point, and that represents the upper left-hand corner of our quilt top. And we're going to drive the machine to the upper right-hand corner of our quilt top. And we're going to set a second area point there. Whoops, I'm using the wrong buttons for our two-corner. That didn't work out so well. There we go. Sorry, it did. Sorry, I thought we were upside down there. So this represents the entire width of our quilt, but it doesn't have any consideration for the so height. So you went straight across. Could I have moved my machine down? You could have. You could move your machine down and set the second two corner point. And then I would have to type input in Input the measurement for the height. Okay, so we're going to have to one way or the other. But okay. either way, when we do the two corner area, when we set the first corner, Wherever we go diagonally away from the first corner, we're going to get either a perfect square or a perfect rectangle. Mm -hmm. Right angle corners. Exactly. Yes. So then we're going to input the height of the quilt. And the height of this quilt was 45. 45 inches. So we're going to set 45. So your width is 38.7, and that's giving you about an inch off of both sides? Correct. And then on your 45, was that the exact height, or did you add an inch? Oh, I've added a little bit of extra space just for mishaps, who knows? I always do, too. I just <laughs> a little insurance there. I do that, too. Never okay. hurts. All right, so now what I see is you have the area of your whole quilt. That's right. Why do you do, the air, why do, you do your whole quilt? Why wouldn't you do one row? The reason I do rows. it this way, we used to do it one row or two rows and repeated them, but with the tools that Pro Stitcher Premium has now and the ability to move the designs around on the screen, you can choose exactly where you want your patterns to be. By doing just row after row after row, you really don't have nearly as much ability to create the design that you want. And then that you can see what your density is exactly. too. Exactly. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's yep. really nice. Very okay. True. All okay. right. So now what? So we're going to pick a pattern. You're going to go to the File tab. That's where, where my library is. File, Design, and then Open. And we're going to navigate through these beautiful folders. And I'm going to use a design from the HQ Designs. Continuous line. And a line. continuous line. And we're going to choose a continuous line pattern because we want to be able to do the repeats that'll stitch all the way across the throat space in one continuous okay. stitch out. So continuous line has your start and your end point on the same plane line. Yep so that they will be exactly. continuous. And we have our little green start, start, start 
icon on the left side and a red stop icon on the right side. So you can see that this pattern is clearly a continuous line right. design. So quick and easy, this is probably the easiest kind of pattern there is to, to do in your Pro Stitcher. So as a new Pro Stitcher user, this is exactly what I recommend, is mm -hmm. to choose a pattern like this that fits neatly into that little square. Now, the next thing we're going to do is go to the Repeat tab. And from the Repeat tab, we're in the Basic Options. This will be the first time that we've gone so to the sidebar. So Basic up in the ribbon. Yes, ma'am. Basic from the ribbon, and then we're going to move over here to the right-hand side of the screen, and this is the sidebar. So this is where all of our third choices are made. From so from the ribbon exactly, to the sidebar. Exactly. Everything has That's a correct. function over there. Okay. So we have the basic options. We have horizontal and vertical options where we could input our own number of repeats. Mm -hmm. But I like to go straight down here to this fit button, because once that button is pressed, Pro Stitcher multiplies that design as many times as it can without changing the size of the of pattern the original. and without exceeding the space of the area. Okay, all so right. So it's pretty darn quick so and easy. So it's pretty close to the sides, but I'm seeing we have space in the top and the yep. bottom. So now... We have some options here. We can add a row and move or crop away what's on the outside of the area. We could stretch our design. Okay, so let's, that, so it's the vertical, so we need to go to the vertical sure. option. First of all, let's stretch it and see if you okay, like it. Okay, let's do that and see what it does to the proportion of our design. Okay. Does it look stretchy to you? It does, but you know what? It's doable. But if we stretch it too much, it will it fit in our throat space. Possibly. How are we going to decide? Well, we can actually move our machine. There's where it starts at the top. Correct. We can come all the way down, and this pattern would fit. Yep. It may not if we stretch it too much in one of the exactly. smaller throat spaces. But, but I think I'd like to add a repeat. Okay. So let's do that. We don't have to unstretch. All we have to do is add another repeat and see what that does to our design. Oh, that makes it yeah. more more better. It, se <laughs> <laughs> it seems a little better proportion now. It does. I think sometimes when you stretch a design, instead of squeezing in an extra repeat, the design starts looking a little diluted. Yeah. You know, it feels yeah. a little, a little weak. Stretched but this looks a little more dense, and I think that's okay. And this is a really dense pattern. So to measure this, if I place my crosshair at the top of that, looking where it is on my fabric, mm -hmm. and move that down, so that's the size of a clover. Gotcha. If that's too small, mm -hmm. I guess you'd then take out a repeat, right? You can. You'd take out a repeat and hope that you still had room to stitch that right. bigger row but in I your like, thread I like it. Oh, I, like I do it. too. Okay. I often use the measuring tool to figure out what the distance is between the stitching lines. Oh, that's a good idea. Or, of course, we have our actual size over here. Let's do the actual size, see what okay, it looks like. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Those oh. are pretty pretty tight areas, less than a half of, yeah, half of an inch in some places. Yeah, mm -hmm. but not bad. I, I could live with that. I like that. It's a pretty cute pattern. Yes, it is. Real good. I think the density. Is that it? Or did we do we, we never stretched it horizontally. Okay. And you can see that there's just a little bit of empty space on both sides. Yes, I see that. So let's that. do that. Let's go to the horizontal options in the sidebar and stretch the horizontal. And that does make it fit okay. a little bit better. So if we were going to go ahead and stitch this, the next thing we would want to do is baseline the pattern. And what does that do? Baseline is one of those interesting tools. Baseline basically freezes the design in its current condition. Right now, Pro Stitcher is thinking about four repeats horizontally and five repeats okay. vertically. So 20 different designs. But when we baseline this pattern, Pro Stitcher gives it a new name, calls it Repeat Clover, edge to edge, okay. and now thinks about it as one piece. So it makes Pro Stitcher a little bit smaller. So you still have your rows. We do. But it takes each repeat across and combines. And that's right. It gives Pro Stitcher a little bit less to think about. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Are we ready to go? Are we going to stitch this one? Um, I think we should try one that's got a little bit more Okay, a but little if bit we, more detail if we, to it. Okay, with more issues. <laughs> if we were going to stitch this one, is this it? I would just press my start and go? Pretty pretty close to it, I'd be ready to see. I mean, I'm ready to stitch so right now. What if, what if I had to leave in the middle of this? Well, I would save it. So to I think the two most important things, baseline and save. Right. So now, if you were going to save stitch. this, how would you save this? What would you save? Because I know there's some options. Okay, yeah. I, I usually save the selected design. The area is the tool that I use 
to set up my pattern, mm -hmm. and I consider it a design tool. Okay. But once my designing is done, I don't usually use that same area again. Okay. So for me, I would go to the File tab and save the selected design. Okay. But that's not what you do, is it? I, that's right, I, that's not what I do. I always save, uh -huh. but what I do is I go to the workspace and I save my whole workspace, which, what is in my workspace, an area and the design. All the designs that and are. And the reason is, is that I sometimes will use that area to make sure that it's lined up or gotcha. to, to bring, so I always save the two, but you don't have to. Mm -mm. You, you know? have options. Yes, that's the nice <laughs> thing about it. Okay, so you're saying there's another design that has some. Oh, yeah. This was easy, and, and there's nothing wrong with easy. This stitch is If I was ready to stitch, though, what do I do? Okay, if we're ready to stitch, we go to the Pro Stitcher tab, and quilt is the default option there. We make sure that our ties are set the way we want them to, and I almost always set a start and an end tie. And so to set, like if I have four tie-offs or whatever, mm -hmm. then you'd go into the settings. Right, we'd go to the settings tab. Okay. And then here we could choose our number of stitches per inch and the different tie-off options that are available okay. to us and the pull-up and pull-up mm -hmm. auto options that are also available. And then all we'd have to do is say run and our darling machine would say, I know what to do. It would drive itself right over here to the start so point. So that was what I was going to say. <laughs> I know so many of our quilters go, oh, I've got to find the start spot. No. I've got to move it over here. I've got to get it right where it needs to go. But we don't, do we? No, we don't ever have to drive the machine. So if I press that, running. it's going to move itself right. over. And if it doesn't move there, then we've done something Then we've made a mistake. But that's we right. know that that's it. Yes. That's right. Okay, I'm just going to stop. There you go. And we're going to come back. Because there's another design, or other designs actually, right, lots of them that have other issues that we need to work. Right, with. a lot more complicated or more challenging designs that are going to use more of the cool tools that Post cool has tools. available. Cool tools. That's to exactly us, right? it. So we're going to keep the same area that we've got now since it does really represent our quilt. Okay. But I'm going to close this design. The so selected. I'm just going to close the selected design. Now, if I closed the workspace the area would have closed too. And so, had you done that and you didn't want to, what would you do? Undo. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite. You notice yeah. the undo is at the very top of the yes. toolbar here. <laughs> do you think it's because it gets a lot of use? <laughs> I'm sure. sure. And this time we're going to go to File, Design, Open, and we're going to navigate, oh, it wasn't hard, to the Baptist fan pattern. Okay. Now this Baptist very fan is a whole lot different than the one we just worked with, isn't it? It is. So if you were to put a box around that, the bounding box, I can see there's a lot of blank space in that where your, your clover is. didn't have. There is. So that creates issues mm -hmm. as we do things. If you zoom in a little bit, and I'm doing this with the scroll wheel on my mouse just to make it a little easy. Let's okay. move this over just a hair. You can see that that blue box is, we call it the bounds box, and it represents the total height and the total width of the design. So the outermost part of it all. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The design that we were working with a minute ago, the start point was right up here in the very corner of the blue mm -hmm. box, and the end point was right up here in the very corner of the blue box. So when we repeated that design, everything just snapped together perfectly. Without having to. But this one, the start and end point, or the start point, isn't anywhere near the edge of the box. And it's inside. They're still on the same plane line, though. Exactly. But we're going to get a completely different result when we do fit on this one. Okay. Okay, so repeat. We're in the basic repeat options, and there's a refresh. And we're going to hit fit again and watch what happens. It's not exactly what we expected. <laughs> this is what I expected, but it certainly isn't what some people might have expected. Right, because now we've got that space. We so did. So those, that end and start, they right. didn't snap together. Exactly. And they're not designed to snap together. Um, there are times when we don't necessarily want these repeats to be put together. I do on this one. Yeah, I do on this <laughs> one too. So we're going to use a tool that's going to do that for us. We're going to close the gap. And this is the gap between the horizontal repeats. And we have a one button press solution for that. Right here, it's point to point. Or P to P. That's it. And when we do that, boom, they did snap right together. Okay, now by doing that, I see I have extra space. So we do. So let's add a couple of repeats, shall we? Let's add a couple of horizontal repeats. Okay. Now, 
I think we're close enough to the edges here that I, I wouldn't take away a repeat. Okay. Okay. But we still also have to worry about that gap in between. You notice that when we did point to point, it So only you're talking about the vertical gap yes, now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we're not quite sure how many repeats we're going to need from top to bottom until we resolve that. The gap. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can I zoom in on this? By all means. I'm going to press the zoom. Okay. And I'm just going to draw a box around this a little bit. That's pretty cool. That's one of the one of my favorite new tools. I, I shouldn't say new, it's not that new, but so you can see right up close the space right with your with your arrow that space right there. Right here, that gap. We got to close up. That's right. You can see the gap here. That was designed. Yeah, right this there. this gap was intended when this pattern was digitized. When we stitch this pattern with a ruler Mm -hmm. or when we stitch it free motion or free hand quilting or hand Usually quilting, they, are they touch. The little rainbows come in and touch. Mm -hmm. When we start quilting with the long arm, a uh, computerized long arm, we don't really have that much control over the draw-in of the quilt as we stitch along. So that gap has been left there because it's great for the eye to see that gap. It's okay if that gap is there. Okay. But what we don't want to see is overlapping. We don't okay. want to take a chance that one of those little rainbows will right. come and cross over the beautiful arc from the previous. That's okay. what that gap is there for. That's nice. So now we want to create a similar gap between our horizontal okay. rows. Okay. Okay. So we have to mimic the gap, the exactly. horizontal gap. So we're going to go from the horizontal to the vertical tools over here in the sidebar. And then there's no point to point here. And the reason is there are no start and end points to connect Up to each down. other. Exactly. So we're going to manually close the gap here by just pressing on the minus button so here. So put the space of each one closer That's right. together. And you can see it closing. The minus, so it's going into the negative That's area. That's right. Okay. Cutting back into that space. And more. More. We're getting pretty close there. And if I want to get really picky, I could turn on my measuring tool and measure the distance here and, and then input that number over here. I like what you've instead got Instead of minus. I think that looks perfect. Yeah, I think it does too. So let's refresh now and look at our, look at our whole quilt again. Oh. We've lost some ground, haven't we? <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> we have the right density now, but we still have some empty spots so at the top and the bottom. So we need to now add some vertical rows. Sure, so let's add a row. Oh, that was perfect, That's just by good. adding one row. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Okay, that looks good. So do we now do a stretch? To, because I can see they're too big. What do you think is going to happen if I stretch this pattern? Well, I think it's going to stretch or move or shrink. Actually, on the vertical, it's going to stretch it. And on the horizontal, it's going to shrink exactly. it. Exactly. So it's going to go to the side walls of the area. Right. But it's not going to change the fact that our pattern doesn't touch the edge of the area all the way around. Okay, so we've stretched and we're okay. inside. Okay, uh, but there's some yeah, issues. Yeah, we've got some things to take <laughs> care of still. But that's what makes this but such that a looks great pattern really to use. really good, yeah. really good. But now we need to fill in those side exactly. blanks. So we have another tool for that. Okay. I know. So we've used Repeat Basic so far. Now the wrap options are available to us. I didn't mention this before, but when we first used the Repeat tool, that wrap option really didn't e even show up. It was oh, grayed out. Oh, it was grayed out. Mm -hmm. we, because okay. we hadn't met the criteria. In order to use the wrap tools, you have to have a repeated design. Okay. So now we can change to the wrap tools. And when we do, we have new options over here in the sidebar. And the first one is the window. And really, this window relates to the blue box. Or the pink area. Uh -huh. Exactly. Everything inside of it. And what I want to do is take one of those repeats, just one Baptist fan, and what, what Pro Stitcher is going to do for me is it's going to take half of that and put it on one side of my, my box, and half of it and put it on the other side so of the box. So it'll fill in those blank it spots. Will. So okay. that's what we're going to do. By wrapping the window by half, Pro Stitcher yeah. magically. Yeah. I know, it's awesome, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I love doing that. I just love how people, <gasps> ooh. It's so excited. cool. So uh, let's say I want more of that first uh, fan. That, I it, want it bigger. How? So, so these arrow buttons here move or scroll the pattern 
okay. across the mm -hmm, screen mm -hmm. one way or the other, and you have options here. I, you have a lot of jumps, though. Yeah, we do have a lot of jumps. What are we going to do about those? Should we close, close the, the edges? Uh, close the edges. Okay. So there's a button down here. So down here is the option to close the edges. If we zoom in, let's use your little zoom tool real quick and look yes. at what we've got, because I'm not sure that everybody knows what we're talking about. I'm also going to go to the View tab and turn off the View of the blue box and the, and area. the area so just that for you can viewing. see. It exactly. doesn't get rid of it, it just now, hides No, they're it. still there and they're still doing their work. They're just not being seen So those right are now. jumps. They are. Which would be not fun to be quilting because of those <laughs> jumps right there. Exactly. At the beginning of this row, you notice the little dotted line here. Mm -hmm. This is the traveling jump line from the previous row. And so really what that indicates is the direction and the distance that Pro Stitcher or the machine would travel without stitching to start down here mm -hmm. at the blue or blue green, green. start point mm -hmm. for the next row. Right. And so the pro stitcher would stitch and it would follow and when it reached the red jump point it would tie off and then travel this distance without stitching. Exactly. So that's what Vicky was talking about is what about these edges and do we really want to wait while the machine ties off and travels hundreds of those? over the course of Let's our quilt. Close our I'm edges. saying no. <laughs> okay. So now we're going back to the repeat tab and we're still or in the wrap options and down here at the bottom of the sidebar is the option to close the edges. And when we activate that feature, all of those jumps disappear. And now Pro Stitcher would come to that jump and just continue stitching so the path. it creates a stitch path. It does. It creates a stitch path in place of those jumps. Okay. Which is fine because we're going to be stitching right off the edge of our quilt top anyway. Right. We're not going to have to worry about those stitching over or something important. Okay, but I see quilt. over on the right side that there's still some jumps. We do, and we might be able to get rid of some of those by scrolling the window around a little bit. And I'm pretty sure that we just did. <laughs> Maybe one more. <laughs> Do we still? Oh, oh, there it is. Okay. Cool. So there we go. Yes. So we're good nice. from side very to side. Nice. I'm pretty okay. happy. Let's turn our area gonna, yeah. back on, our view of the area, because I can see that we have little gaps at the top yes. and the bottom. And we don't can want we that. Can we do that same thing then yep. with our vertical? That's right. So back to the repeat tab, and we're going to change to the vertical options, and, and we're going windows. to go wrap the window. Now, again, if we wrap the window by half, it's going to split a row and put okay. half of it at Let's the top and like. half of it at That's the bottom. That's the nice thing that you can see. So exactly. I probably would rather have a fuller one at the top. Me too. And you can be as particular as you want. So you can scrolling. roll either way. <laughs> you know, I think about this like a player piano roll. Right. It just right. continues or to those scroll. those little TVs that we had when we were children and you could Oh wind gosh, that. I'd forgotten about that. And them. it would scroll around. <laughs> exactly. That's what I remember. That's yes. the way I think about this. And I can get it as particular as I'd like for it to I be. Okay, I want it. I, those are like fingers at the top. Uh -huh. I want it higher. Well, I don't remember, want the fingers. some of those fingers are going to be eaten up in your binding allowance. I still want okay, it. Okay, <laughs> let's keep going. So... Keep going. I want to get rid of those fingers. So it might crop off a little bit of the top of that next row, but I think I'd rather do that. Okay. Keep going. I'm going. Keep going. Go. Right. Right there. Right there. Okay. I'm happy with that. Good for you. <laughs> Are you happy with that? I'm perfectly happy with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so okay. if we're good, then what do we need to do before we before save we our stitch? design? We're going to baseline. Yes. What are we going to baseline? And all those repeats turn into one continuous line pattern. Now, I see there's some jumps at the bottom, mm -hmm. but when we get to the bottom, I would think, I know usually, because we added extra, we, we added may be extra. doing some cropping. We'll probably crop that away. Yeah, so it won't matter. Shouldn't make a darn bit of difference. Wow. So I think it's time to stitch this. <laughs> you because want to? Okay. the next thing that we want to do is we want to address a couple of issues that come up. While is, we're stitching. While we're stitching. We want to talk about if my thread breaks or I run out of bobbin thread, and so our thread probably won't break, but we'll take scissors and make it break. I know. I know what you're, <laughs> I know. I know what you're planning. <laughs> and the other thing is, is that when I have to advance, 
how do I advance to make this happen? Gotcha. If I have to, and these are things to look forward to today. If I have to shut down today, we've sa we'll save this. Right. If I have to shut down today and come back tomorrow because I needed to go to lunch with my friends, mm -hmm. with us in our red shirts today. <laughs> if I have to do something like that, then I need to know how to get myself started again, yep. repositioned. So these are things we're going to address today. Because you don't have to leave your machine on overnight. Right, and we know people that do. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> okay, so we want to stitch. Let's do it. But we baseline, but what didn't we do? We haven't saved our design yet. Okay, so do you want to go ahead and do that? Sure. So, can so this is a file function. We're saving a file. So file tab and then save the selected design or the workspace, if you'd rather. And then we're going to navigate to the place on our computer, our Windows computer here, or if you're using a USB drive, you can navigate to the USB drive and save so it. So you can find that in your library. Absolutely. If you want. Like I, what I do is I create a folder in my HQ Designs. I always know where to go. Mm -hmm. In HQ Designs, I will create a new folder. So let's right. do that today. Okay. Let's create a new folder. Okay. So we're in the HQ Designs uh -huh. here already. You can tell here by reading across the screen, this tells you where you are in the file tree right now. I don't want to be in continuous designs. I want to be in the HQ designs. So, so that's what's open. You noticed where continuous went away. Okay. And then I'm going to save this. So we need to create a folder. Create a new folder here. And we're going to name it Susan. Okay. I'm even going to capitalize it. So oh. there's my on screen keyboard and create a folder so now you can and see there's that my folder. folder now we'll and it's open because that's it's, correct and now and as you can see it created the folder here in the file hierarchy i always create a folder for each quilt because then i know if i have to leave and come back in two weeks know i know where, where those exactly. designs are that i've been using so we're going to save that and when i go just to look just to make sure it's there file design open Navigate to the same folder. Oh, there's Susan. There's Open my folder, and, have... and there's my quilt. That's awesome. Good job. Okay. All right. So we can close that. Yep. I think it's time to stitch. This. I'm with you. Okay. So let's go ahead and stitch row one. Okay. And then we'll address some things. Okay. Okay. You're on. So pro stitcher tab. We've already checked to make sure all of our settings are the way we want them to be. We're going to choose run. And the Pro Stitcher gives us our Verify Settings window to remind us to raise our needle out of the quilt. And this is a, another opportunity for you to make sure that you've set your settings the way you want okay. them done. Like you didn't leave your basting stitch on or something. <laughs> Been known to do that. Tell me you haven't done that. <laughs> How many times? And then we're going to press Proceed, and the machine's going to drive itself to that green start point that we expected it to do. And I'm holding on to the top thread. That's really important. Mm-hmm. Why is that important? Because if I let loose of that top thread, it's going to get tangled down underneath it my quilt. It tends to pull it down. It does. It sucks yeah, it down in there. And then I'm going to hang on to both of these threads snugly. I'm not going to pull on them. I just put my finger down to hold them against the throat of the machine while the tie stitches are being taken. And that prevents any extra thread or nesting from happening underneath on the back side of the quilt. Okay, we have this at about a medium speed. Which just works fine. If you wanted to reset that, you'd press pause and then just speed it up. Yep. But this looks good. So we're going to go ahead and let this stitch, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about, well, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Let me get my scissors. Oh, we're going to do this now? I think we should. Are you sure? I think we should. You don't want to do it after we drag and drop? No, I think we should do, what do you think? It's up to you. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to show you something. We're going to go ahead and pause this. We're on the Forte. The Forte has the ability to read and feel that my thread has broken. Right. If you have it turned on. Yes. And this one wasn't turned on. Right. I so noticed that. So it just <laughs> kept going. So the important thing about having it turned on is you want to show them where in advance to turn that on. In advanced on the Pro Stitcher. 
the thread break sensor right there. That should do it. That should do it part of the way. You have to turn it on two different ways. Now we're going to go up to our bar to our Pro Stitcher. You're doing the same thing I am. Here we go. Mouse. Use your mouse. Go, no, go up to the HQ. And now we need to go to our settings and alarms. And our alarm was turned it on, was so on it here. was. It's on here. That's good. But we need to have both of both them turned set, on, both on the machine and. So that's the just something teacher. for you to know that those both have to be turned on, or it's not going to stop. And this one All wasn't right. on. So we've gone quite a ways. Mm -hmm. Now we need to come back. Yeah, we're going to have to back. Okay, go for it. Bit. Okay, so let's look oh, at. Go ahead. How about if I thread the thing first? Sure. Why not? Should we get? Might let's, as well. I'll get out of your way. Yeah. Yeah. You'll let me thread it here. <laughs> Clip a good sharp point there and thread this. <coughs> okay, there. It wasn't too difficult, was it? Nope. All right, and can I bring up the bobbin thread too? It's still attached. Do you want to leave it attached? No. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, good. I just didn't know where you were going with this. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that. Okay. And now it's yours. Okay. So we need to restart. Let's zoom in. The way I like to do this, and there are lots of tools, but I like to get right over where I want to start sewing again or really close to it first. Now, that's not exactly where I'm going to end up, but okay. this is where I like to move the machine. And with the crosshairs right over that point, I turn on the follow option. Follow, centers, <laughs> I should be using my mouse, follow, sorry, centers the crosshairs in the middle of your screen. And as you use the zoom tools, you can zoom right in on exactly so the point in your pattern. So there's another way to use the zoom. Yeah. So this is the, one, this is the way that I normally do it. Vicki showed us a little while ago the way she does it with the zoom tool here, where she clicks and drags a marquee around the space that she mm -hmm. wants to enlarge, and that makes it a little bit easier. But we, we each do these different ways depending on That's nice. what so we're used to. Either way. I love having all these, this mm -hmm. many options. So with my crosshairs, and remember, the crosshairs represent the needle. So my needle is here on the quilt at that point in the pattern, and so my crosshairs reflect that on the screen. Here I'm going to go to the Pro Stitcher tab. Before you do that, though, mm -hmm. tell me what this little orange dot is. That little orange dot shows us where we canceled the quilting or where we stopped quilting last, which would be useful if we were going to start sewing in that point that again, point, but we're not. We okay. Because we let the machine stitch for so long without thread, we have quite we have a ways to, to back up, right? Okay. So that's what that little orange guy tells you. This is where the machine was stitching mm -hmm. when we canceled or paused the quilting. Okay. So here, zoom in, then Pro Stitcher tab. Pro Stitcher tab is where we're going to find the new start and end functions. That's how we can change where the machine is going to okay. start to sew or stop sewing anytime we choose. In the new start and end is where we're going to choose where we want to begin stitching again. Now in the sidebar, we have options to set the start point and options to set the end point. Okay. But for now, we're only concerned with restarting Pretty so close this to whole here. channel or this whole column is yep. all to do with start. This is all about the start point. And so there are several different features here that we can use. The one we're going to start with now is the auto feature. And when I hit the auto feature, it brings the start point of the pattern right here to my crosshairs. Automatically. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Now, if I if I move the, the needle right now, if I move the crosshairs around right now, it follows you. The pattern follows or the start point follows. So this is a two-step process. This is an active tool, and I know we've talked about active tools before, but as long as this is green, then it's automatically going to continue bringing the start point to my crosshairs. So in order to fix the start point there, I have to hit it a second time and deactivate the feature. And now oh, when no, you move the machine, follow. it stays okay. where it is. Mm -hmm. So don't forget to use that auto twice. That, that can mess you up a little bit. Okay. You'll set your start point and then move the machine, and suddenly you'll it goes, someplace it, it goes somewhere you don't <laughs> expect it to go, and that's not very exciting when, you, when the right. machine decides to go off in a direction that you're not expecting. 
Okay, so right now the start point is right over where my thread break was. So and I have that's a question. not where I want to sew. Okay, yeah. my question is, do you want to do it on a curve, or would you be would it be better and less obvious if you moved it to a point? It could be less obvious, but if we're really careful about how we do this, we can do a pretty good job of connecting even on a long, okay, go for gentle it curve. Now, if I if I had a great place to go hide my tie on a little bit better, I Maybe might. Maybe if it wasn't solid fabric, you could hide it exactly. in a busy print. Exactly, where, or where there's some can you know, thread congestion mm -hmm, already, mm -hmm. like at a point where several threads come together. Right. But really on this pattern, there's not much of a good place to mm -hmm. to hide. We don't usually use this high contrast thread, like, you know, not well, we always. we want to see it today. Sure, exactly. So, Vicki brought up our thread, and she trimmed our thread tails even with the quilt top, right? Mm -hmm, Both thread tails. Mm -hmm. So, I don't want to start sewing right there. I want to back up my stitching. I don't know, three or yes. four, five so stitches. So that when they stitch over the top, they lock exactly. each other. So they stitch directly over each other. That, to me, makes all the difference in the okay. world. Now, I can keep moving the machine around, but that doesn't give me the opportunity to show you the next part of the new start and end oh, tool. Okay. And that is these little arrows down here. I can arrow the pattern or the start point either backwards or forwards using this and this. Okay. And I want to back up into my pattern. So I'm just going to back up okay. a couple of di line segments until I know that my stitching is going to overlap. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then when I'm ready to start sewing, and I'm going to go ahead and double check just to make sure how far down. There's a little more in there probably than I need. I'm going to go back forward another line segment or two. Okay. I think that's going to give me what I want. Then the way I usually do this is I turn the machine speed down pretty slow when I'm getting started again because I want to make sure that these pieces line up correctly. Okay. And as long as the machine is stitching really slowly, then I have the ability to, to manipulate the quilt top a little bit. But uh, we didn't shift anything. Well, we didn't shift anything, but remember the draw in as okay. the quilt begins to sew. I mean, as the machine begins to sew and the quilt starts to draw in a little bit, we don't have control over okay. how that's happening. So we have to account for it a okay. little bit with, you know. I trust I you. know we think that we should never have to touch the quilt again once we have a pro stitcher, <laughs> but even every once in a while you still you want to get your, your hands, hands on, on your it quilt. And right. It. So I'm going to go to. Well, I guess I don't need to do it there. I'm going to go to the quilting or quilting options in the Pro Stitcher, uh, and I'm going to change the speed settings on the Pro Stitcher so that it, it doesn't stitch site quite so, so quickly getting started. So you're going to go like way slow? I'm going to go down to the very okay. slowest, down to snail speed while we're getting started. And then all I have to do here is turn on the tie feature here, tie on and pull up. Okay. Before I resume. We only paused our quilting. We didn't cancel That's our quilting. That's true. We're still So in if the we run. started sewing again right now, Pro Stitcher wouldn't have tied on. It would have just taken off. It would have Okay. Would have done it at turtle speed or snail speed, and but so, it would have started sewing and without a tie. And we have two different tie-offs and you've got it set probably at the micro so it doesn't d do a back and forth. I don't I'm not sure cuz I honestly didn't set the machine but I assume that it's set for a micro. That's the way I normally do it at home. Okay. Is I set that's it for a I, micro. That's what we do too. <laughs> we like that. <laughs> okay. So uh, since we're in the middle of quilting, I'd have to cancel the quilting in order right. to test that. Right. Which we that. could because it's still going to start. Well, that's true. We have it set just exactly yeah. where we want it to. Yeah. But I have a feeling that we're going to get exactly what we want out of that anyway. Okay. Okay. So Let's hit resume. Okay. The machine is driving itself bullet. very slowly. Now, when it pulls up and moves over, I look at that thread to make sure it that, is it's, dead on. that it's dead on. And if mm -hmm. it's not dead on, that's when I put my hands on the quilt to manipulate the quilt right. just a little bit while it's getting started. Okay, I'm going to bring both those. Can I hold them? Please. All right. And now you're going to use Whoops, I'm going to use the mouse to hit resume. Old habits die hard, don't they? Okay. Okay, and then while it's taking oh, it's the tie stitches, little, I see, what see how I'm saying. putting my hand down just a hair to keep it right on. Okay, okay then so pause, and then I can change the speed again. Whoops, maybe not that high. Okay. And then I don't want to tie when I resume this time, so I'm turning those off. Okay. Okay. 
Well, Susan, <laughs> we stitched a little of this, and then we kind of decided we wanted to do something more rather sure. than just watching this stitch. Right. So we're actually going to clear this off. I want you to show me there. I know in the wrap there are two functions. There was right. that wrap with a window. Exactly. And then there's the wrap with a row. Right. And I want you to show that. Exactly. And then when, after we get that planned, then we'll talk about finding the right position when we lose our position. Right, exactly. Okay, so let's clear the design that we have made here. Okay. We're just going to close. What, could we just not do clear all? We could, but that would take away the area too, and I want to use our area again. But the area is well, not in the right place. Well, do you want to move it, or should we set a new one? Ooh, can we, yes, let's move it. Okay, so let's close the selected design. Okay. And then move the needle okay. to the point where you want to start my the area. upper left hand corner. Okay, exactly. I have it here. Okay. So from the sidebar in the workspace tab, we have the option to select the area. So I can select it here. And, and it, you notice that it turned green. So that means it can be edited. That means it's been selected. That's what that green tells you is that it's and I can edit selected it. and I can edit it. So we could resize it, we can move okay. it. Okay, it's just like a design at this point. Exactly. And then we're going to use modify. What? I have another tool. You want to do it? Go ahead. I do. Go ahead. Use your I tool. Do. I know what you're talking about, but I want to. I love this tool. Okay, go for it. Okay, you you're running the mouse. I'm just okay. going to tell you what you to do. You tell me what to do. Go ahead and go down to below Zoom and press X form. Okay. So what that does, and it's going to take a minute to do it. It's going to put handles on. There it is. This. I want you now to move the top line down to my crosshair. Okay. And now we have just put a, the top corner where I want it to we be. We did. And we don't have to do anything at the bottom because no, our quilt is the same length that it was right. before. We just removed the top part of what we stitched I from our love area. This. That was I think pretty it's slick. Just such a fun thing. Pretty okay. Slick. Now, what do we do? Okay. Well, now we go to the file tab and we open up a new pattern. Okay. Once Can we start, I, how do I get rid of my handles? Well, I think they're going to go away when we start doing something else. Can I show? Sure. So on the X form and the zoom and the pan and the select, they're all toggled between those four. Mm -hmm. So if I want to get rid of them right now, I have to hit one of those other three. Right. So if I and hit then, the select tool and then click on the screen, and it goes away. the handles go away. And they're pink again. And Yes. Okay. But they're also not just pink, but the line doesn't look the Good same. Good point. It's Why? dotted. It's dotted. Well, what does that mean? That means that the, that the area has been altered in some way. Since we can pick up and move an area from one place to another, if we could inadvertently move an area, so we you could get into trouble. So you were going to show modify to actually to reposition it. it down. Yeah, I was going to move the area downwards. Rather but than yours use was the a smarter option considering the length of our quilt. Yeah. They're both work. They both they do. work. So. They do. Okay. All right. Now I need a design. Okay. So, File tab, Design, Open, and we're going to choose... Can we bring this closer to you? Sure. Traditional clamshell design here, mm -hmm. and Open. Okay. And there we go. So, I can see that this clamshell is three wide mm -hmm. and one and a half high. Okay. And so what's, what's the high size of our area? Do we remember? Let's uh, look here on the 30 area tab. Step, so, it's not exactly. There's some half measurements there. Almost 39 there. inches. Yeah, so okay. so if we do a fit, it'll almost fit perfect. Let's do repeat, fit. Whoa, Whoa. that puts a lot it, in there. It is a lot of design. So I can it? see we have extra space. Mm -hmm. And so how are you going to address this? Well, we have lots of ways, but again, we can stretch. Let's just see what that does okay. to our... If we go to the horizontal options and choose to stretch, how is that going to make us feel about our proportion? Clamshell is typically a half circle. But that's still it really still good. looks like yeah. a half circle. Yeah. It's amazing how how easily you can fool yourself. Into yeah. <laughs> okay, but we don't have enough, so we could stretch it, and that may make yep. that. And let's stretch the vertical. Enough in the vertical. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I Very can live good. with that. I could live with it, except it's not offset the way it's supposed to be. You're right. When we do our traditional clamshells, and when we do them with rulers and so, so forth. So what if I wanted this to be a bigger clamshell? Well, we could take out some repeats. Let's take out some repeats. Okay, let's do it. We'll take out Ooh, some. Oh, there's 28 vertical rows. We can take out some rows. 
to make our clamshells tall. Oh. If we kept going before long, they'd start looking like little Easter eggs or maybe little minions or something like okay. that. Okay, go down to 20. Okay, we'll go down to 20. Okay. And let's look at our horizontal options. Do we want that many going across? Well, let's take some of those out as well. Okay, let's take out a couple. So I'm just hitting the minus okay. buttons to remove the number of repeats. So now it'll be less dense, mm -hmm. quilted, mm -hmm. which, you know, for this, Works for me. Okay. Okay. All right. So now what? How do we... So here we want to change the offset of every other row. And we do that in the wrap feature. So we're in the repeat tab. We're going to change from basic to the wrap. And then over here in the sidebar, you'll remember before we wrapped the window. Mm -hmm. This time we're going to skip down to the row. And we are going to use half. Okay. Because wrapping the window by half Perfect. gives us exactly what we want from a clamshell. Perfect. Right? It's Perfect. pretty cool, right? Yes. So, so this further. is definitely a half offset. Exactly. But there may be some that's 33% oh, yeah. or something. There are lots of patterns like that. And, there, and actually, you don't always know what offset is anticipated or expected by your pattern. If you know how to use this feature to wrap the rows, there are lots of patterns in the Pro Stitcher and of course lots out there in the marketplace mm -hmm. available that you must know how much offset right. to make the pattern fit correctly. So the other thing about this is, is that I can get a lot more rows stitched before I have to advance. Oh, for sure. This is a great pattern for that. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people are using this as um, mini. Oh, I love to do that. Okay, so we have some quilts. Sure. I'm, I'm just going to bring them over here. So on our quilts here, this is exactly that little clamshell. Sure is. And so you reduce that down. Took you a pattern just like this and made it down to where each individual clamshell is about between a half and three quarters of an inch wide. About a half My, inch wide. Oh, that, that's awesome. Aren't they cute? Yeah. <laughs> little, little fish scales. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So then you created an area, mm -hmm. multi-point area, placed that in there, cropped it, and you've got this That's awesome. Right. And the same thing with any one of these. Every one of those. Or any one of the designs that you have yep. here. The and these process. are designs that are actually in Art and Stitch. That's right. Every one of those came out of Art and Stitch. And so you can do awesome designs. You can stitch those clamshells this big, or you can stitch them this big. <laughs> and I, I love that. And the Pro Stitcher that makes that so much easier for us. Yeah. Okay, so just, just I, you know, I just took you off in another direction. That's okay. I'll just bring this back. We kind of have a tendency away. to do that. Yeah, we're quilters. Yep. Okay, so now we're ready to quilt. Mm-hmm, almost. Okay, what's... We got a baseline. All right, so... We have a lot of repeats there for the Pro Stitcher to think sure about. Do. So let's baseline our design, and then we would save it. Okay, so, so we'll do file. it. File. Save. So let's save the workspace this time. Okay, we'll save the workspace. And we're going to navigate to, let's well, go to my folder. What if we oh. just leave it in the workspace? That's fine. We have a workspace folder, or does it, it saves it in, in the, that workspace? In what, this particular folder. Okay. See designs. So if we were to, let's go ahead and save it, and we can type okay. in any number, or it gives it a number. We'll just let it give that. It oh, gave it? Well, I'm just going to show it because it's easier to see. It gave it or assigned workspace number 9152. So it'll always change the number. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted to, I could rename this to Clam Vicky's shells. Clamshells. Right. There you go. Okay. But I'm just so going to save, save it the way it is. All right, so now let's cl clear everything off of the screen. Okay. Ah! No, let's clear off. Bye-bye. Okay. Now, I need to bring this back onto the screen. So how, we, where do you I... You didn't really mean for me to do that? Is that what you're trying well, to tell we me? Well, we can undo, <laughs> and it'll put it right back there. But where am I going to find it in Workspace? So, File, Not Design, File, Workspace. Okay. And here, Workspace, and there's 9152, our Workspace right at the top. Okay. So there it is. And is it in the right place? I hope so. Let's is see it? if it is. Oh, well, <laughs> sometimes it brings it in, but a lot of times it doesn't. Well, since and we haven't turned today, off the machine, it, it is. Right. Today it just kept it. That's right. Yay. If it didn't, then we'd have to figure out how to get it back. Right. And the way I, I like to use the reposition mm -hmm. and the top left corner. Mm -hmm. I, I do. Just, everything. And, and if I have a whole quilt, I do that too. If I, have, if I hadn't stitched anything today before I 
had to turn off and come back tomorrow, mm -hmm. then I would just set the area and reposition or align right. the design right into the area. Okay. <laughs> well, I really think we ought to stitch a couple of rows, and then we're going to show how to advance. Right. Okay. Let's All right. Do it. So, are you ready with your with your little yep. mouse? There? I've got the mouse. I'm, I've got the thread. You got the thread. So, pro stitcher tab, quilt, and all of our options are selected. Okay. So, run. Going to move over there. Got both of my threads. And there go the clamshells. All right, we'll let them stitch. We'll come back and we'll. Uh, Figure out how to move this. Okay, sounds good. Okay, Susan, we've got some rows here, and if we want to do more rows, I'd like to advance it forward. Yep. So show, do your magic. Okay. So bring the needle down to the bottom of the stitching, pretty close to the bottom okay. of the stitching. Now, there's no science in this. It just needs to be close to the bottom of the stitching. Doesn't have to be in any particular point. And then we're going to drop the needle. So you're saying it doesn't necessarily have to be there unless you're unless you feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I feel more comfortable. Okay, I'll drop it right there at that little point. Better? <laughs> I'm, I feel so much better. <laughs> okay, so we've dropped the needle. Now the way I like to think about this is we've got our pattern set up here on the screen. Uh -huh. And I, I just want you to visualize this. Imagine that we had this pattern on a big piece of paper. It's a big piece okay. of paper and it was printed. And we laid that pattern out until it matched right here, and we just pinned it down with the needle. Okay. Okay, just keep that in mind. All right. Now, we're going to activate the drag tool. The drag tool takes that pattern and has the pattern go wherever the needle goes. Okay. So think of that pattern pinned down by the needle, and we've activated drag. So what you've done is you've taken the needle and grabbed hold of the fabric. That's right. And then the screen, by pressing that drag, grabs a hold of the design at the same place. Exactly. Okay, so they're going to stay locked together. That's right. They're okay. going to stay together exactly until we drop the pattern. Okay. But we're not going to do that until after we've advanced the quilt and finished all the manipulations that we need to do with the fabric. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and release my clamps on this side. And then we're going to loosen the poles. Okay, release the, the ratchets. That's right. And then we have to be careful here because we don't want to put any unnecessary drag on the needle. So we always want to add a little bit of slack at the front okay. end first. Okay, okay. Okay. I'll take your mouse off for Thank a minute. You. So put some slack and then roll the back bar and watch the pattern advance on the screen. I saw it go, went right up out of the area, which exactly what the quilt's doing is going That's what up we out wanted. of that. And there you go. Okay, so, so can you advance it some more? We could keep right on advancing. I want lots of space here. That's good. The more space we have, the more quilting we and can do. And it just keeps going up there. We have to advance again. Okay, that's good for now. Is it? Okay. Well, for now. I would have done more, but we're, we're good. Okay. And then you're going to go ahead and tension and set. Because we have the pole cradles, we could right? lift that or So now we would everything. normally pop the bar out and put it in the pole cradles so we could get underneath the quilt top and smooth out our and then batting, put our clamps and on. then put the clamps back on okay I'm doing my clamps now Susan I can't stitch this down because my needles in the fabric well we can cancel the quilt after we drop. No, no, we can't cancel. Okay. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> Don't worry, Vicky. We can do it. But that's what panics, you know, our quilter sometimes is. What do I do now? So I'm letting you tell me what to do next. Well, I want to make sure that everything's nice and smooth. Okay. I want to make sure, in particular, that there's no bunched up fabric around the needle. Like it's been pulled out. Exactly, okay. because if I drop the pattern and raise the needle, the quilt will shift a little right. bit. So I particularly want to make sure there's no pressure being put on that needle. And then looking at your screen to make sure that, because I bet you I can move that. You Look. could. Troublemaker. I know. <laughs> but I just wanted to point that out. That's yeah. why I like the area. Yeah, that's a good point. I like you that. You know? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I like that back. you left the area there. I put, yeah, we put it back. Smarty pants. Okay. All right. Okay. So what we need to do now is drop the pattern. 
Now, anybody that's looking here can tell that the pattern shifted up out of the area I'm that we get had rid set. Of that long. That's a good idea. Okay. And you can see that we advanced the quilt. So our area isn't really, it's accurate to where our quilt was before we moved it, but it shows you exactly how the pattern moved up out with the quilt sandwich. Mm -hmm. Which is cool. I know, that's I love what it's it. supposed to do. So I'm going to drop the pattern. Okay. Right here. We're going to drop. This is another one of those tools that's active Toggles. and then DL, a toggle tool, right. It said drag before and when we clicked it, now it says drop. So when we drop the pattern, it's landed where it's supposed to be. We're going to raise the needle. And then if you want to check your accuracy, although you really don't need to, but you can, you can drive the needle along your pattern and compare it here mm -hmm. to how it aligns on the screen. Okay. And it really did go just it like did. it was supposed to. So now I it's very easy. now that my needle's out of the fabric, I can go ahead and yes, stitch you down can. my side. I'll let you do your side. Okay. And then you can do <laughs> yours. And if you want to, you can place this into the basting stitch. But I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly stitch that down. Less than a quarter inch. And normally, when you're doing edge-to-edge -edge quilting, you would put on your glide foot, I would, you? exactly. Always, almost always use my glide foot for, yeah. unless I want a foot for some other reason, some other foot. Yeah. The glide so foot's on my we machine We probably should have put it on, but, okay, and now I'm you're going to side. base the other side down. Give you. And we'll be ready to stitch our next full throw space here. Oop. Okay. There we go. So we've advanced, but does the machine know where to go to the next start point? So right now, if you look at our pattern, the start point is at the very beginning. It's at the very first stitch point. But we didn't cancel our quilting. All we did was pause between rows. So when we hit resume, Pro Stitcher's going to go and start stitching the beginning of the fifth row. It knows. So if our customers, our quilters are a little nervous, they could actually move their machine That's true. over to the row that would be right there. The beginning of and the fifth row. And if it doesn't row. go there, then we know we did something exactly. wrong. Exactly. Good choice. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, one more thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know it's going to go there, but I'm going to actually do something. And I know I what want you're going to do. I, I want feeling. you to fix yeah. something because this is what happens. Okay. I'm going to actually take this and uh, we're gonna, I'm going to press the you're stop. You're going to have to cancel the quilting. I'm going to cancel yeah. the quilting because we can go back. I'm actually going to drag that away. Okay. It's not in position I'm now. not afraid. Would you show our <laughs> quilters how to get lined back I up? I am not scared. Now, if my area were truly set, I could put it back in my area. Do a skew and just... Exactly. I we're not. Put it back there. Because we've advanced. So we are out of position. Exactly. So what we're going to do now is pretend like we quilted today. We're in the today, neighbor's yard. And then we shut our machine down at the end of the day and we're going to come back and it's tomorrow morning and we're going to open our pattern again. So I really wouldn't need the area on there. Nope, we're not going to need the area anymore so we can clear the area. Okay. Okay. But, but... So I... Pro Stitcher doesn't have any eyes, right? It can't tell what's right. going on here on the quilt. So this is where we're going to use our own tools and our own powers of observation to realign the pattern to the existing stitching. Okay. Now, we stitched one, two, three, four rows. In this case, rows one and two are just repeated again and again and again and again. Sometimes we're on a pattern, though, that isn't the same every other row. Right. Maybe an offset pattern full of florals or something, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and each row shifts over a little bit. So we would normally want to pick the, the, the row, row, the correct row. Okay. And so this is important. We're going to use the same tools to reposition the pattern and to tell Pro Stitcher where we wanted to start sewing again. Mm -hmm. But we're going to do them in completely separate, distinct operations. I think what happens to quilters sometimes is they start thinking about these two separate op operations as one, and they get a little bit confused. So we're going to identify a point in our pattern that we can also see 
in our existing stitching. That has already been exactly. stitched. Exactly. So we have to find what I call an easily identifiable point in our stitching, and okay. then we have to find the same point on the screen. So my thought would be the start point. Yeah, the start point or an end point, one or the other. Something that you can get to. Exactly. If, you can't, if you've advanced it too far and you can't get to the start point, then maybe somewhere in the bottom one of, of these that other row points. to match it mm -hmm. up. Because this is a neat, this is a perfectly reasonable mm -hmm, place to mm -hmm. start. But it's easier to move the start point than it is to do okay, some other right. part of the pattern. So we're on the fourth row here. Okay. And we want to use the start point of the fourth row in our pattern. So I'm going to use my mouse to zoom in there. And here's the beginning of row one. And row two. And row two. <laughs> and don't let that confuse you. Because we've offset this pattern by half, by 50%, the start point of row one and row two are right what would look like the same point. Right. So let's you can go see the to jump across. Exactly. So here's our pro stitcher tab. Here's the new start and end. Check this number out here. This is the segment number, line segment number, and right now it's at zero, which is how we know that our start point is at the beginning mm -hmm. of the pattern. If we're going to use the same jump tool that we were talking about using earlier where we can just jump down uh -huh. through the mm -hmm. rows, we're going to hit that jump down and now look at our start point. Jump again because okay. it's on the same point. So if I'm confused. But I see my number Exactly. Increased. That number is a key for you. That's your cue to know, oh, I sure did jump I down a row. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's the beginning of the third row and one more jump will put us at the beginning of the fourth row. Okay. Okay. So, now we're, we've, we've matched the two points. We need to put them in the same place, okay. right? Okay. So, I'm going to move my needle over here to the first stitch point of that row. Okay. Can, is that, I, I'm not quite tall okay, enough. Okay, I am. <laughs> I am tall enough. I'm going to go right there. Do, I'll just drop, your needle. drop it down. Okay. And the only reason we're dropping the needle is so the machine doesn't move around while okay. we're doing this. It's not part of the process, but it's okay. a stability thing. And then we're leaving the Pro Stitcher tab and we're going back to the Modify Tools. And we're going to Modify Reposition. Now, okay. this, is, uh, this tool has so many different options to use, but we're going to focus for now on the start point. This tool repositions the start point of the design to your needle wherever your needle is. So by putting the needle so there... So let's see where the needle is. Okay. Oh, clear up there. Yeah, the needle's so way up to, there. Yeah, we're right. way out of position. Okay, so watch what happens. Okay, so modify, reposition, start point. Okay. Refresh. So part one is done. We told the pro stitcher to put the pattern back so that it lines up with our previous quilting. And if we raise the needle now, again, we can drive along the pattern and we can see that we line up correctly with the okay. existing stitching on the quilt. But that's, I've already stitched that row. We don't want to stitch that row again. So? So we're going to go back to the Pro Stitcher new start and end, and this time we're going to jump one more row downward. So look at our segment number now. We're at line segment 963, okay. and when I jump again, the start point goes to the beginning of the next row, and we're ready to sew. Okay, let's do it then. Okie dokie. Well, here, All I'll right. let you do the sewing. I've got the button. All right. Well, <laughs> before we start stitching, I just want to thank you for coming today. This has been delightful. I hope that you have learned as viewers something more that does make sense to you. This has been so fun. Love being with you. You too, girl. You're, you're, you're my favorite. favorite. Thank you. Hey, yeah, we just thank know you for how having to think me. a lot. <laughs> so when we show up in the morning like this, <laughs> without like, plans. We're like, oh! <laughs> Our colors, yes. Right. So thank you. Thank Pro you. Stitcher is yours and my I love it. favorite tool. It's we, the best we, tool. Yeah. Any you know, we're always looking for new things to think to do different exactly. ways. But thank you for joining us. Thank and you for having me. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, look at the little button below the video and subscribe so that you'll get a notice of all of our videos and everything that we're doing at Handy Quilter. Thank you for joining us. Join us again next month for another fun HQ Live.